The Colorado River's water levels are the lowest they have been in a century. The river is one of the most important across the southwestern United States and northern Mexico. It provides water for around 40 million people in the surrounding areas and supplies, water to 5 million acres of farmland. Let's find out why Colorado River is drying up. Over the last century, the river's flow has dropped by 20%, according to data from the U.S. Geological Survey. Then, beginning in the 1920s, western states began divvying up Colorado's water, building dams and diverting the flow hundreds of miles to Los Angeles, San Diego, Phoenix, and other fast-growing cities. The damming and diverting of Colorado, the nation's seventh longest river, may be seen by some as a triumph of engineering and by others as a crime against nature. But there are ominous new twists. The river has been running especially low for the past decade as drought has gripped the southwest. It still tumbles through the Grand Canyon, much to the delight of rafters and other visitors. And boaters still roar across Nevada and Arizona's Lake Mead, 110 miles long and formed by the Hoover Dam. But at the lake's edge, they can see lines in the rock walls, distinct as bathtub rings, showing the water level far lower than it once was, some 130 feet lower as it happens since 2000. Water resource officials say some of the reservoirs fed by the river will never be full again. Every sector in every state has a responsibility to ensure that water is used with maximum efficiency. In order to avoid a catastrophic collapse of the Colorado River system and a future of uncertainty and conflict, water use in the basin must be reduced," said Tanya Trujillo, Assistant Secretary for Water and Science at the Department of Interior, in a statement. Two of the river's reservoirs are now less than a third full. As of December 17, Lake Mead's water levels stood at 1043 feet, or only around 27% of its usual capacity. Lake Mead could reach 992 feet by the end of July 2024, according to a two-year probabilistic projection of the Colorado River system by the Bureau of Reclamation. This is the U.S. Water Resource Management Office's probable minimum level the lake could reach within 24 months. The river is not the only one in the U.S. to be reaching dangerously low levels. The Mississippi River's water levels are also the lowest they have been in a decade. Climate change will likely decrease the river's flow by 5 to 20 percent in the next 40 years, says geoscientist Brad Udall, director of the University of Colorado Western Water Assessment. Less precipitation in the Rocky Mountains will yield less water to begin with. Droughts will last longer. Higher overall air temperatures will mean more water lost to evaporation. You're going to see earlier runoff and lower flows later in the year. So water will be more scarce during the growing season, says Udall. Other regions, the Mediterranean, Southern Africa, parts of South America and Asia, also face freshwater shortages, perhaps outright crises. In the Andes Mountains of South America, glaciers are melting so quickly that millions of people in Peru, Bolivia and Ecuador are expected to lose a major source of fresh water by 2024. In southwestern Australia, which is in the midst of its worst drought in 750 years. Fresh water is so scarce, the city of Perth is building plants to remove the salt from seawater. If the lake's water continues to dry up, there is a possibility that the dam's turbines will no longer be able to generate power. This would happen if the lake reached a reservoir elevation of 895 feet, a level where water would not flow past the dam. This would mean that the water levels were too low to flow through the Hoover Dam, ceasing that electricity supply. It is unacceptable for Arizona to continue to carry a disproportionate burden of reductions for the benefit of others who have not contributed. Tom Bushatska, director of the Arizona Department of Water Resources, and Ted Cook, the general manager of the Central Arizona Project, said in a joint statement, The basin states have not yet produced a viable plan nor has the United States proposed a plan that achieves the protection volumes identified by the Commissioner. Achieving volumes at this magnitude will take significant contributions by all water users in the Colorado River Basin. Bushatska and Cook said, In Leopold's time, the delta stretched over nearly 3,000 square miles. Today, it covers fewer than 250, and the only water flowing through it 
except after heavy rains, is the runoff from alfalfa, lettuce and melon fields and pecan orchards. The river has become a perfect symbol of what happens when we ask for too much of a limited resource. It disappears. In fact, Colorado no longer regularly reaches the sea. Invasive plants such as salt cedar and cattails now dominate the delta, a landscape of seemingly endless mudflats where forests used to stand. And in the Gulf of California itself, shellfish, shrimp and waterfowl have declined dramatically as fresh water has dried up. In Las Vegas, there's growing awareness of just how serious the lack of water has become. As of 2026, there will be a ban on the planting of natural lawns in the city, and even today, there are tight restrictions on when and how many gardens and lawns can be watered. Repeat offenders can expect a hefty fine. Since the launch of the enforcement agency, some 16,000 infringements have been logged, 2,000 of which led to fines, totaling half a million US dollars. The water diversion to large conurbations such as Phoenix and Las Vegas has significantly lowered the river's water levels and altered its course. However, the amount of water diverted for agricultural use in California and Arizona is causing the most controversy. Alarmed by the growing crisis, the federal government has taken a series of unprecedented actions to try to navigate this uncharted territory. There are ways to use less water, explains Aaron Derwingson, Water Project's director for TNC's Colorado River program. The cool thing about TNC is that we work on everything from developing and testing tools with partners to address water shortages to figuring out the economics that support these tools and helping generate the political will to implement them at scale. In August 2021, the government implemented a Tier 1 shortage for the first time ever. The Tier 1 declaration meant that the farthest downstream states that depend on the river's water, Nevada and Arizona, as well as Mexico, would not receive their full allocation of water in the next year. The Federal Bureau of Reclamation also conducted an emergency release of water from reservoirs in Wyoming and Colorado in order to boost water levels in Lake Powell. In both Lake Powell and Lake Mead, Low water levels were putting hydropower infrastructure at risk and threatening to cut off drinking water supplies for Page, Arizona, and chapters of the Navajo Nation. In addition, in May 2022, the federal government decreased water releases mid-year from Lake Powell for the first time ever. Then in June, the government called on states to find an additional 2 to 4 million acre feet AMAF of water savings in 2023. To put that in perspective, Arizona's entire share of the Colorado River is only 2.8 AMAF, and Colorado's annual share is a little over 3 MAF. In April 2022, states in Colorado's upper basin agreed to release water from their reservoirs to Lake Powell. These historic actions provide some short-term relief, but they only address the immediate crisis. The basin needs long-term solutions, not temporary steps that only buy us a few more months says the Nature Conservancy's Colorado River Program Director, Taylor Hawes. And, she adds, we need to bring all the stakeholders to the table, including those like tribal nations who have been traditionally excluded from decisions about water. So that's it. Please like, share, and comment your thoughts below if you liked this video. Remember to subscribe to see our next video. Stay safe and we will be back soon with another video.